Hello, hi, I'm Katie, and I'm here to talk to you about my experience of creating my own online show. Um, it's a romantic comedy, and it's called Match Not Found, and it's about a woman's eventful quest to try and find the right man. And as the title suggests, it's not really going very well. Um, so I'll, I'll take it from the beginning. Basically, once upon a time, I was at university. I was at this university, and I was an actress in a Nickelodeon show called Genie in the House where I play a girl who wishes for things and they come true. And then I finished university and the show finished at the same time and the wishes stopped. And I realized that as great as wishing is, it's probably a better idea to get out there and create your own work. And YouTube provides the perfect platform to do that. So that's what I decided to do. So I wanted to create a character that I could have a bit of fun with um, and I didn't really want the headache of having to try and raise huge funds like you would if you were doing a big TV production. And I had a look at what is out there on YouTube and a really popular thing is vloggers. You know, you get a lot of that kind of content on YouTube. It's popular because people are talking to the audience, it's intimate, you know, it's easy to maintain and that it's quite simple to film at a high level of consistency week after week after week. And so we had a look at that and thought, how can we put that into a scripted piece for entertainment and comedy purposes? So we decided to set our show on Skype. It's a talking heads piece, essentially, with these friends talking about their love lives. And um, it's, all, it's all online for an online audience. So I'm sure you're all dying to see it. So uh, I have a little clip here from an episode. So I'll just play that for you now, just to give you a feel and a sense of what it is. Hey lovelies, thanks for tweeting about guys with a case of the X-Files. At Laura Bond, the guy who kept calling you her name sounds a bit awkward. I'm still trying to shake my own X-Files syndrome, and you know, doing well, but of course it's not easy. Hey, uh, you left me a message? Yeah, uh, you're quite into computers, aren't you? Uh, yeah, that's my job. Great, because- well, no, 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 I know what you're thinking. I'm not hacking anyone's Facebook for you. What? No, of course not, I would never ask that. You know, I just wanted to find out more about you and, you know, your job. That's weird. It's not weird. I feel like we are always talking about me. You know, we should talk about you. Let's talk about Doug, you know, and Doug's work. So tell me, what, what is that exactly? Okay, well, I'm a coder. We're basically the top of the, the food chain when it comes to computing. I write scripts like Java, Perl. Whenever you turn on a computer, my handiwork is wow. at the forefront. Wow, interesting. Uh, so how about social media? Well, yeah, I know some of the basic scripts of the protocol that they use. Oh. Has Doug got into her profile yet? Ha! I, I knew it! Oh, please, Doug, it's just one little favour. No, I'm not hacking her Facebook. I can't do it, it's too hard. Who is she? Oh, I don't know, but she's been posting provocative comments on Johnny's wall. Well, not exactly provocative. Don't you stick up for her. Sorry? Really provocative. I mean, the way she wrote, nice bumping into you in Sainsbury's. Oh, I mean, filth. Yeah. And the cat photo. Trying to mark her territory? She might as well just pee all over it. Actually... So some know. girl has been posting on his Facebook wall and you want to know who she is? We want to destroy her. No, I don't. I just I want to find out what's going on. Then destroy her. Maybe a little bit. So can you help me? Well, I can't hack her Facebook, like I've said. Uh, have you tried the usual routes? What's her name? Yeah, well, I've had a look at her Twitter. There's nothing there. She's called Melissa Fielding. Yeah, well, it could be nothing. Then why does she like his profile picture? Melissa Fielding, two mutual friends. Wow, she is fit. Doug. Oh, sorry. Uh, pro anyway, there you go. You get a gist of uh, what the show's about. So it's uh, quite a small team that has put that together, really. And I'd say a big part is of creating your own YouTube content is working with people that you know, that you trust, and that you want to collaborate with. So the director of this actually directed me on the kids show, Jean in the House. Um, Alex, who's my co-writer, I met here at Middlesex University and he'd worked on EastEnders E20, so I knew he had experience with web series and things like that. And Connor and lovely Kirsty, I'd worked with in a play, so I knew we had good chemistry and that we'd gel together. So it's all about sort of who do I know, what can I get for free, for love, that kind of thing. Um, and then a really important thing, once you've got your product, is scheduling. So you want to create a sense of regularity with, with your viewer, a sense of you want to try and be part of their daily routine, if you will. So with our Twitter, you know, sometimes people are like, oh my God, it's Friday, it's time to see Kat, you know, try and seduce yet another guy and it doesn't work, that kind of thing. 
Um, social media is also really important in terms of drawing people to your channel. Obviously, if you're doing a, a TV production, you know, you, you get the big advertisements and the X Factor break, that kind of thing. Um, but with YouTube, you don't really get that. So you have to be relentless in your social media. So we use Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We do sponsored ads on Facebook. With Twitter, we try to use people's names. So we've got a really hardcore fan called Joanne. And she messages us every day several times a day she's lovely and we always use her name when we're talking to her we're like hey Joanne thanks for watching you want to kind of create that sense of intimacy um, after we released the first series on YouTube YouTube actually contacted us and suggested doing a partnership scheme which is where they give you advice about how to raise your subscribers so whereas TV you know a lot of the focus is about viewing figures and how many people are tuning in with YouTube they're very interested in your subscriber count how many people were subscribed and they gave us different tips about what we could do to, to, to do that so there's something called spotlighting where links come up as you're, as you're watching like a little button will pop up saying subscribe and people can click whilst watching the episode um, there's something called an end card which you can put on the end of an episode which you can film separately where we'll all be like hey tune in and subscribe and things like that obviously if you're watching Game of Thrones you, you know at the end of the episode you're not going to have Jon Snow pop up and be like I hope you enjoyed today's episode why don't you subscribe <laughs> it's just it's a different thing with YouTube it's completely acceptable to ask people directly, please tune in, please subscribe. You know, if you're not begging for it, like everybody else is doing it, or your competitors, so it's not the not the time to be modest. Um, they YouTube also threw a couple of networking parties that we attended, and this gave us the opportunity to firstly be part of a community, but also to do collaborations. So another way to raise your subscriber count is to collaborate with other YouTubers that are successful and, have, and share off their audience. And so we've done quite a few collaborations now and that's really helped us raise our subscribers. Um, we also do bonus material. So we do things like how to's, because if you look in YouTube, we, we had a look at what people are searching for and things like how to kiss came up and and how to break up with someone and so we do that but we keep it in our space we keep it light and comical and, and things like that and uh, that's helped bring people to our channel as well I'd say a really important thing with uh, the web series has been creating our own brand a sense of some, something that is unique to us our own sense of identity and a big part of that for us has been we have our own theme tune. You probably heard it slightly at the beginning there, and it kicks in at the end of every episode. And uh, my friend, who's a composer and musician, actually had a song that he gave me and, and let me use it on every, on every episode. And the viewers got quite into it and were like, where can we see this song in its entirety? So we made a music video for it. And that instantly got more hits than all our other videos put together <laughs> like very quickly we're like ah oh, how's this happened um so music and comedy seems to seems to work well um and the stage that we're at now is that we are entering lots of competitions we've just um been we're part of the official selection for rain dance um so we're going to be screened there again that's to try and reach a wider audience um, and I got nominated for best lead actor in a web series go me um, and so we're quite excited about that there's also there's other competitions you can enter there's things like the webbies is quite a, quite a big one as well we're going to enter that and it's just about putting the channel out there putting the show out there and raising its profile as much as possible um, so hopefully you've taken away from this that the you know incredible opportunity that YouTube provides, you know the platform that it provides for people to go out there and create their own work and to just do it. And um, I guess it will be no subs uh, no su surprise if I say to you guys, subscribe. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, okay, I will go first okay. while the audience is getting ready. Yeah. Um, you spoke a little bit about the kind of strategies that you have uh, to, to increase subscription and, and mm -hmm. engagement. So you have spotlighting, you have the end of card. Yeah. Can you reveal more strategy to, strategies to us or tactics, let's that call them? Um, I mean, it's largely it is word of mouth and, and getting it out there. Um, social media, as I said, is a big part of it. Um, the, co the, the collaborations is probably the biggest. So net, uh, networking with other YouTubers is so important. Um, 
there was this when we went to this YouTube networking party. There was this Italian Italian stallion there, and uh, he put up one one video, and he got six thousand subscribers in like a week. <laughs> And so they got him to do a presentation. They were like, how did you do this? How, how, how was this possible? And he was like, I just put the video up and it just, it just happened because he was so, so fit, basically. So um, we, we were like, oh, let's try and get him in. You know, he could be Johnny, my love interest. So I think it's, it is largely about sort of just collaborating, getting yourself yeah. out there. The, the end card thing does work. We, we did notice like a spike in our um, subscribers once we did the end carding and the spotlighting. Um, but those are the main techniques that we've been using. Can you talk a little bit more about these collaborations? Because increasingly it seems like um, if you do not collaborate, if you do not link the videos with other videos, mm -hmm. um, you, you're like dead, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, with the, with the collaborations, it's basically it's just trying to reach a wider audience. So we're doing one at the moment with a, a lady called Izzy, and she's she does fashion. So but we're going we're gonna to take it into a comedy space. But you know we've got girls in the series of dressed up, you know that kind of thing. And so we're going to do a fashion show, film it, and have it backstage, and it will go a bit wrong, and it will be part of our comedy space. Um, the other thing we do with our videos is that we have a playlist and it takes you from one to the next. Mm -hmm. So you ideally, like with Netflix, they do it as well. You want people to binge watch your series. So if you automatically have it that one video then goes straight on to the next, people are more likely to sit there and just binge watch your show. And Netflix do the same thing. If you don't click off in five seconds, you're already on to the next episode, you know, before you've even had time to think about it. Mm -hmm. And it's that kind of power of suggestion and that kind of... It's just making it easy for people, easy to, to view your content without them even having to do anything, just to automatically let it roll, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll probe a little bit uh, more. Yeah. And now you, you may be talking generally as, as a YouTube creator. Mm -hmm. In terms of your budgeting and your cost, uh, you said that you have some cost involved in social yeah. media, so you may pay for an advert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you actually budget, do you know, do, do you have a spreadsheet where you go, this is the amount of hours I spent today, this is how much I'm being paid an hour. Do you um, list the cost of the collaborations of the social media? Do you operate it as a business, as it were? Yeah, we do. We, we do have to budget. I mean, some things we've got for free and for love and some things we've had to pay for, you know, as is, as is life. So um, with our collaborations, we've been lucky in that we've managed to get those for free in exchange that I've done a collaboration mm -hmm. with them. So we had a guy called Johnny in and who's a, a musical theater a vlogger and he's got about 10,000 subscribers and he did our channel for free in exchange that I would go and do a quiz show on his channel for free so that was you know um, but there's some things like we equipment so we buy our own equipment we've got a lot we've got like four cameras we've got you know wireless mics we've got you know sound equipment it's all quite expensive the equipment is quite expensive and then you have to have the insurance and all that kind of thing is not cheap Mm -hmm. And then there's obviously, you know, the actors and things like that. Your so labour time? Our labour time. I, a lot of us do, me and Alex, who write the show, we do it for love. Um, you know, you, you get money from the advertising from mm -hmm. YouTube, but it's not, it's not life-changing amounts, you know. <laughs> if I was relying on it, I'd be on the street. <laughs> so it's not, until you get to that level, I think once it takes off, you know. But a lot of people make money more so from sponsorship deals and so we've got some meetings with some advertising agencies mm -hmm. and that kind of thing is where people tend to make their money if you're sponsoring a product and things like that then that's where you see money coming in really let's uh, stay on that level when you say is, is there a certain amount of subscribers you need to get before you get your sponsorship mm -hmm. and is there a certain amount of subscribers or views you have to get <coughs> in order to Start paying your rent. <laughs> well, we've had um, over about a million and a half views on our channel so far. And in terms of dollars, that translated into about $150 um, from YouTube. So that's the, sort of, that's the sort of level that that works at. Um, in terms of subscribers, they say the first thousand is the hardest, apparently. And then once you're past 10,000, apparently it, it rolls a lot easier. And we did notice that once we passed 1,000 subscribers, it did seem to move a lot, mm -hmm. a lot more quickly than the first the first thousand was a little bit painful um so yeah it, it takes time and persistence really so roughly should we say that 
<clears throat> once a video gets 500 or once your videos get up to 500,000 views then you become eligible for sponsorship and what is when you That's get more when, than 1 million yeah, subscribers once we'd once we passed a, I think a million views was when YouTube contacted us um, mm -hmm. about the show but they said they were interested in it partly because as well that it was scripted content as opposed to vlogging um, even though it's got the vloggy style and that more commonly vloggers is what's common on YouTube and they wanted to encourage sort of scripted entertainment on there mm -hmm. um, so I think that fed into it as well Fantastic, you're giving us great insights. Oh, um, <laughs> is this time now to open it in the floor, maybe? Yep. Hi, thank you Hello. for this, these good insights. And do you actually use a uh, mm, kind of a camera person that isn't part of the series? Is we this all like a, a camera that you could have put in front of yourself? Or do you have this kind of a, anonymous camera? camera being in different places and floating around. Yeah, we have um, so we have such a small crew, but we do have our director who does the cameras. And so we're all on separate cameras. We're, we're mostly in the same room. Connor's sometimes in a different one, but me and Kirsty are usually in the same room. Um, but yeah, we don't do it ourselves. You could do, you could do, but you might, it's not easy when you're trying to act and you're tr you've already got quite a lot going on. It's easier to have a director and somebody else who's gonna do the cameras. So he takes charge of that. And I'm happy to let him do that, <laughs> you know. Okay, the question was actually a bit different. I'm oh, sorry. Um, do you have this kind of uh, anonymous cam cam camera? You know that the ca there's camera movement uh, from a person that can't be seen on screen. Oh, I you see. Know, do you stick to this kind of video blogging style where there is no um, extra non-diegetic camera work? <coughs> or is it uh, that you have like in a Hollywood film, down. a camera that moves and we don't see, uh, we don't know why, why the movement why is the, there. The show is always set on Skype. Um, the characters are generally aware that they're on Skype. Occasionally, we've, we do some out, outside episodes where, you know, I'm walking around with a phone and occasionally I'll have an interaction with a, a man that I'm trying to seduce and he's not aware that I'm, you know, like that he's being filmed occasionally so we have done outside things somebody else might take the camera and film like an, a little encounter you know as the series has gone on to try and you know do different things with it but generally it's always set on skype and it's usually the characters are aware is that hello. Is, it's hello. A, yeah hello um, <laughs> so you mentioned that um, uh, so you mentioned that you'd be out on the streets if you just relied on the money yes how do you support yourself are you all kind of like Part -time actress, part -time actress. Oh, God. So out on the street, I was being a bit dramatic. It's a typical actor, you know, thing to do. But um, yeah, basically, I'm an actress, so I have other acting work coming in, and I've managed to survive on my acting work. And um, the YouTube stuff is, I just wanted to create something myself. You know, sometimes you have gaps because it's quite unpredictable. So sometimes I'll be busy and I'll be working, and I'll be like, oh, it's going great, you know. And then You'd, sometimes if you don't work for a few months, it can feel like, oh God, I'll never work again. And I found it quite difficult. And it's given me so much more confidence mm -hmm. and so much more acting work, funnily enough, has come in since I've been doing the web series. And I think that's because it's empowering to create something yourself, to not just depend on someone else to say, oh yeah, I'm going to hire you. I'm going to put you in this thing. I think you're great. It's like, it's nice to say, oh, actually, I am great. I'm going to play the lead in my own series and I'm going to make it myself. And, you know, YouTube, you don't need permission to do that. You can, you can do it yourself. And it's been really great in that sense for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm.